hope these will fit. We might have to modify them, make some bushings, drill some stuff out. You know, whatever it takes, we'll find out here momentarily. And you say, stretch, who cares? It's just an ugly pickup bed trailer. Well, you know, the thing is, I like things that are durable and last and just plain work for many years, if not generations. And this little trailer should be one of them if we take care of it. And it really doesn't ask much. This is like literally the one service item in this thing. And uh, you know, for all I know, the oil that's in there leaked out 30, 40 years ago. So I got this stuff here. This is from Mechanic Steve. I uh, helped him with some stuff around his place when he was selling one of his houses and he let me have pretty much whatever I wanted out of his garage because he'd already taken out everything that he uh, uh, wanted to move with them, so I got this like brand new jug of gear oil and I even had some black RTV left over from honestly I don't even remember what so Basically, between that and the salvage shocks, we'll have this thing in much better condition, and it's not gonna cost me anything. Now, I'm not expecting this to be my biggest blockbuster production ever. However, I know a lot of you guys really like these random shop vlog type videos, and so I figured I would film the maintenance on this thing, because we all know, you know, whatever you have, even if it's not much, uh, you know, if you want to actually get to do cool things with your money or save it or whatever, you have to take care of what you have so you won't have to replace it or replace the axle under it. And like I said, really doesn't even cost anything. Hopefully I can have this thing in and out of here in like an hour. So let's get to it. All right, so the first thing for us to do is to make sure these shocks, um, if the trailer bottoms are out, are not gonna be too short. And I think, yeah, like I said, there's a lot of life left in these. I think these were probably replaced sooner than I gave the last dinner credit for on the service truck. Um, so let's see, bottomed out, pin to pin on these. A little over 14 inches. Yeah, I can already tell this should be perfectly fine because from approximately where the pin is to this bottom pin is a little more than 17 inches. As you can see, looking at this. So you figure even with this gap removed, it's still more than 14 inches from that bolt to that one up there. So we're not gonna run the risk of damaging these shocks. Man, the shock on this side really just doesn't want to come loose. So what we're gonna try is this part of my slide hammer set, which I've never actually tried before. And if it fits these pliers properly, uh, it comes with this little piece here, which screws onto the end of the slide hammer, screws into the back of the vice grips. Ah, oh, farmer fixes. Farmer fixes. Hey, yo, clean is this washer ain't gonna fit. I'll just run it down with the impact. Just stick it out on there. I'll be all right. Oh. Oh. All right. That was incredibly harder than it needed to be. But this shock is older than I am. Oh, okay. All right. This one didn't fight me at all. That was a welcome change. Only had to cut threads again on one of these two upper deals. Oh, ain't nobody got time for torquing stuff. See, I was made to be a farmer. Man, this is always the fun part. We gotta compress this thing and then run this bolt through this hanger. Ugh. Oh, man. Yeah, this thing's got some life left in it. It also doesn't help that I'm working at a very less than uh, ideal angle. Now, I don't have a lock nut that'll fit this, so we are just gonna put two nuts on here, back to back. <laughs> that ought to hold it. All right, all right. We got this drain pan under here, and these bolts that hold this uh, cover on look extremely wimpy. It might just be my imagination, but I'm hoping we don't end up breaking any of these off because that would really, really suck. Hey, off to a pretty decent start. All right, yeah, this continues. We won't have any problems. 
There's RTV coming out. I got girl hair on me. There's uh, RTV coming out on the heads of these bolts, which is optimistic because uh, I don't know if this was sealed with RTV when it was new, like in 84 or 82 or something, but I'm not really all that confident in that. Perhaps it was, but this indicates to me there's a very strong chance someone's changed this oil lab at some point. One random tab here. There's another one that was broken off. I can't imagine what the heck would have bolted onto this back cover. Maybe a tag of some sort. All right, I'm gonna leave that bolt in there, smack this thing a couple times with the old brass hammer, and hopefully we can break the seal. If we leave this one bolt in, then everything won't just go flying everywhere, at least not quite as much. Hey, hey! Oh, that's some pretty rank oil. That's some pretty rank oil. Oh yeah, that's pretty nasty. <laughs> this was a good investment of a uh, tiny bit of time. Now that most of that oil's coming out, take this out. Hey, it's all of our gears and stuff. I don't know what they do even though I've watched a couple documentaries on it. Cool! Yeah, so the uh, oil in this thing, it's coming out like baby poop green and black. And there's a lot of sludge and stuff in here. I don't know if, uh, you know, perhaps this is just a dirtier uh, rear axle or something for some reason. I know the stuff that came out of the Super Duty shop truck when it had like 160 something thousand miles on it and was still original was nowhere near this bad. Um, but whatever the case, it looks like there's a lot of filth in here. Also looks like there's some rust. I don't know if whoever RTV'd this didn't do the world's greatest job of it. It's interesting because uh, there's what appears to be a gasket here. And it looks like someone put RTV on both sides of this gasket. Yeah, this is like a, uh, it's like one of those cardboard gaskets. Alright, well, we'll get it cleaned up. So this little thing was working great until I realized the blade in it is dull as a friggin' brick and standard blades don't actually fit in it! Oh, man, that's the kind of thing that really irritates me. All right, so this poor old rear end has uh, seen some better days, but it still looks solid in here. You know, there's some rust on some stuff. The main problem is there's just a bunch of grease. Like, it doesn't even look like gear oil normally, at least not to me. It looks like someone dumped the contents of a grease gun in here, to be honest. Uh, just this thick black stuff caked everywhere. That, and there's still some of that watery syrup stuff down in there which doesn't look good either. So what I'm gonna do, because the front of this thing seems to be leaking, I think that's where the water somehow got in. Uh, I think it needs, I believe that's called a pinion seal up front. I've never installed one of these so that'll be an interesting video. But uh, they're pretty cheap so I'm gonna pick one up and for now what we're gonna do is put at least a quart, maybe a little more of automatic transmission fluid in here on top of the gear oil. Now the transmission fluid, it's not gonna do much for rust like this but all this thick grease and sludge, it'll, it'll sort of cut that a little bit and hopefully get some of it loosened up. So that uh, next time we change this out after changing this pinion seal, then we'll be good. I'm all for maintaining stuff, I didn't really want to mess with that stupid seal but you know, it's uh, trailer doesn't really ask for much and it's extremely useful, so although it's a bit of a pain, I still think it's worth it. Alright, let's clean this up and we'll put some uh, RTV on here and then squish stuff back together. Oh man, the stuff that came out of this pumpkin was something else. It looked like... Come on, work with me thing. I can handle squeezing a tube of toothpaste. There we go. It looked like, uh, if, you know, if you guys have seen the inside of an engine that whoever owned it didn't change the oil very regularly, there's just all that sludge in there. That is exactly what it looked like, and I don't think I've ever seen that before in uh, any type of gearbox or anything. However, knowing what shape the engine that came out of this truck was in, I guess it really shouldn't surprise me too much. Oh, man. Yeah, now, you know, some old-timers, they'd use diesel fuel as the fluid for... Um, you know, trying to loosen up some of that sludge in there. I'm not sure I want to do that, but I think the transmission fluid might just be exactly what we need. Uh, you know, it's probably not the best technique ever if this is something that's, you know, on the highway every single day, but I just pull this thing around the back roads, usually behind the tractor and around my property here. So, um, 
So it'll be fine for at least a little while until we change that seal. But I figure I should add this disclaimer so nobody, uh, you know, watches this and puts that in the back of their daily driver or something and it self-destructs the rear end. Especially because old stuff like this, I think it's going to be much less picky than maybe an electronic locking rear end in a newer truck. Uh, but we'll just have to hope for the best. Alright, this is the part where I drop this wonderfully cleaned and RTV'd pan directly in this container of gear oil here and you all get to make fun of me. Uh, I think what I'm going to do is just get these in here more or less finger tight and then once this has had some time to set up we'll run it down with the impacto. Alright, uh, let's see. So as most of you guys know these square headed things fit normally a 3 8 drive ratchet. You can see this one was leaking a little bit so I guess when we put this back in we should make it a point to you know maybe use some pipe tape or something to prevent this. Not that it really matters that much I suppose. But yeah we got all this grease in here so you see old Craftsman High Dollar pick to remove all this. Yeah, that's really in there. Oh, man. All right, uh, we might actually not be able to get this out because this is the only way I can think to get in here. All right, now we'll try loosening it, loosening it now that we've tightened it a little bit. No, it just spins the ratchet out. Ah, oh, crap. All right, so one of the things GM has really got right on, at least their older trucks, I don't know if they still do it, is that there's this hose. Um, trying to do too many things at once here. There's this hose that goes into the rear axle, which makes it really easy to fill it. Now, unfortunately, this hose has been cut short over the years. Wonder how that happened. Uh, so we're gonna remove this, put on my own hose, and then hopefully we'll be able to fill this thing up just with that. It's going to be interesting to fill because it's going to be, you know, airlocked, so it'll be bubbling out due to the fact we can't actually open the side of this thing at all. But, you know, we'll just have to do what we can do. Ah, heh, I'm looking up at the uh, cut half of the hose and it's like full of dirt. <laughs> so, I guess it doesn't really matter. Okay. Alright, so. We got our hose coming out the side of the truck and I got my little funnel here and we are going to be using for this Mitsubishi Motor Company uh, specialty automatic transmission fluid. Now this is another treasure from Mechanic Steve's Garage. He, uh, he sold a house a while ago and it was really cool of him. He let me have pretty much whatever was left in his garage because at that point if he wanted it to move it, he had taken it and uh, so yeah. To me, it's just random automatic transmission fluid, but this was probably like 10 or 12 or 20 bucks a quart at a Mitsubishi dealer. But I don't have a Mitsubishi, so we're just gonna dump it in here. <laughs> oh, this is gonna take forever. This stuff's like the thickness of cough syrup going through this tiny little funnel. All right, well, we are gonna make it work. It should only take, I don't know, what, two, three, four quarts in this thing. It's going in. Thus it begins, guys. This is exciting. Hopefully this is just chock full of detergents and everything else to uh, bust loose some of that sludge. It's just the weirdest thing ever. You know, I'm almost half tempted to fill this entire thing with transmission fluid, then drive it around the block a few times and drain that. All right, so I've been working on this thing for a while. Gave it just under three quarts of oil, including that automatic transmission fluid. And you will notice that uh, I filled it until it started leaking out from that uh, pintle. So you looked it up, it's at most a $6 part. Just a little bit frustrating because, you know, I was hoping to be done with this today for obvious reasons. But, you know, one of the things I've learned in life is you get a lot further when you start to look at things and the value of them in terms of, of time as opposed to money because time is money. So, you know, you don't look at something and say, you know, this is gonna cost me however many thousands of dollars. You look at it and say, I'm gonna have to work for however many days in order to have the money to acquire this thing or to fix this thing or whatever or save that much money. It doesn't really matter. The point is you look at things in terms of time. Now, this trailer, including building it, 
Keep in mind, I bought this thing for an engine I needed for another project, and then I sold like the cab and a bunch of parts off the truck for more than I paid for said truck. And so looking at that and the fact that I used free gear oil and, um, and free transmission fluid and leftover from I don't even remember what RTV sealant, including the time it took me to build this thing, uh, this trailer will cost me like, I don't know, three days a little bit more than that and a whole six dollars for this pinto seal and that's really about the only thing that can go wrong with this and then it should just be good indefinitely famous last words but still i can't really complain too much you know it's a really handy little trailer i get a lot of use out of it but it's still a little frustrating because i didn't think this would take this long today because pouring in all that oil without any way to vent that pumpkin uh, you know, you have to pour in incredibly slow because you have to wait for air to come back out. And so it took forever to fill this thing up. So I think what I'm going to do is when we go to change out this pintle seal, when I replace this fluid, which is hopefully going to wash out all that sludge that's in there because reasons, uh, what I'll do is I'll put like a vent in the top of that back cover that we open. Maybe I'll use like a bolt or a pipe plug or something. And uh, so you take that out and then you pour the oil in and the air goes out and then it fills up in like a fifth of the amount of time it took today. So yeah, that's that. Um, I think it's still worth maintaining because like I said, it's, uh, it's nothing fancy, but I get a lot of use out of it. It's a good little trailer and I got to order this stupid pintle thing and then, uh, yeah, and then figure out how the heck I'm supposed to install it. So random shop vlog, a little frustrating when things take longer than expected, but it is what it is and I'd like to thank you guys for watching. That's the other thing, I got to make some cool videos about this as well.